New Perspectives on South Asia edited by Akmal Hassan and Muchkun Dubey We request Professor Muchkun Dubey to be on stage for the book release and say few words on the book Please sir Yes, please. Professor Aman Suwan and uh, distinguished uh, participants in this summit conference. Uh, it's my great uh, honor to say a few words uh, about uh, a book which I have co-authored with uh, uh, Dr. Akmal Hussain of Pakistan. Well, I just see him here. Uh, and uh, I thought that uh, since he would be arriving uh, late, uh, I should say a few words uh, on behalf of uh, both of us. Uh, but uh, he will be most welcome to add to what I am saying, because he has all, already managed to reach here. Uh, I think that uh, uh, this uh, book is... Uh, uh, a collection of uh, papers submitted and uh, interventions made in the plenary sessions of a seminar that was held uh, almost uh, four years ago in uh, February 2011 on behalf of SACEPS. Uh, this uh, deals with uh, uh, four defining problematics of South Asia, if one may put it that way. And these are uh, democracy, peace, inclusive growth, and environment, which includes sustainable development. Uh, it is a very well-crafted and architectured book. Uh, we requested uh, eminent scholars uh, uh, and experts uh, from each of uh, the South Asian countries to contribute uh, a paper on uh, each of these themes. And then we included uh, a, another paper by equally eminent expert uh, on uh, uh, a cross-country perspective on these themes. And just to mention a few names, the cross-country perspective uh, on democracy is a uh, uh, contributed by Professor Ronak Jahan of Bangladesh on uh, peace by Professor uh, by, by Dr. Kamal Hussain from Bangladesh and on environment by uh, Lina Srivastava of Kerry from India. Uh, we tried to uh, we have tried to establish uh, an interrelationship. Uh, among these issues. And this we have tried to do uh, in the introduction, a long introduction that uh, we have written together. It's a 20-page introduction. Uh, another major uh, component of this book is the substantive contributions made by uh, some of the very eminent personalities of South Asia who have pioneered new ideas, new strategies, and new action programs in their respective country, in South Asia, as well as globally. And again, to name only a few, we have here contributions from uh, Professor uh, uh, you know, Mohammed Yunus, the Nobel Prize winner, South Asian, uh, from uh, uh, Dr. M.S. Swaminathan, from Allahabad, from Khaled Ahmad, from Pakistan. Uh, these are among the most outstanding intellectuals and pioneers of ideas, policies and actual action in South Asia. And we have their contribution in this book. Uh, then we have tried to analyze these problems in a, uh, some overriding perspective. And these are mainly two. One is that uh, 
what was happening at that time and is still happening to the international financial and monetary architecture in the world, system in the world. And we have two contributions on regional and global financial architecture where very concrete ideas have been suggested as to uh, the, the new institutional structure required in this area. And one of the contributors is right in front of me, Dr. Nagesh Kumar. Uh, then we have, uh, lastly, we have tried to analyze all these issues in another perspective, and that perspective is the unique institutional value system and philosophical heritage of South Asia, uh, which uh, is very much worth understanding, as well as which can be deployed to solve the problems that we have identified in this book. And here we have uh, uh, three contributions, again by very outstanding personalities, uh, Dr. Kapila Bhatsain of India, of uh, Professor Nisru Jaman of Bangladesh, and uh, Suhail uh, Ahmad from uh, Pakistan. I think uh, this brings out uh, the unique features of South Asia, its diversity, its pluralism, its uh, religious tolerance, and its immensely rich cultural heritage. And this, as I said, this can be deployed very effectively to solve some of our problems. I think uh, uh, I should not uh, praise this book being uh, a co-editor, uh, but uh, I think, truly speaking, I would say that this is perhaps the most comprehensive, conceptually highly integrated and uh, design-wise, very nicely architectured, wonderfully architectured volume on the problematics of South Asia that has been published in the last few decades or so. Thank you very much. Akmal, would you like to say something? So I see that there is no lace, uh, which is usually the thing. And this reminds me of a poet who, while presenting a volume to her beloved, said that I hate to bind it with a lace, for there is no grace like thy grace. <laughs> Thank you, Mushkandri. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends, uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, follow my colleague and brother, uh, Dr. Mushkun Dube, Professor Mushkun Dube, to say a few words about the book. I think the very existence or uh, uh, production of this book uh, signifies uh, the brotherhood across borders in South Asia. Uh, the kind of collaboration that was involved amongst the scholars, the statesmen, and between Professor Mushkund and Dub Mushkund Dubey and me uh, was really heartwarming and at an experiential level uh, one, one was able to realize that South Asia exists as a as an ontological uh, an intellectual and emotional uh, institution. Uh, just a few words about the book. Um, the three major um, policy challenges of our time, which are relevant not just for South Asia, they are of a more immediate importance in South Asia, but I think they are relevant also at a global level. Uh, and those are, first of all, how to make democracy meaningful for the people, how to make democracy more participatory, how to build institutions through which ordinary people can begin to participate in the decisions that affect their everyday lives. Uh, that's an essential aspect, making democracy participatory and involving people at the grassroots level in those decisions that affect their lives. That is, I think, an essential aspect of deepening and consolidating democracy in the region. The second is about inclusive growth. Growth that is not only for the people, but by the people. Uh, the essential idea that 
one has been trying to uh, research into for, for the last few years is that we have to turn the traditional wisdom on growth on its head. The traditional wisdom is that inequality is an inevitable uh, consequence of high growth strategies. Our argument is that in fact a more equitable growth can generate a more equitable growth process can generate a higher and more sustained growth. If, if you involve a larger number of people, the middle classes and the poor, in the process of investment, innovation, you have a much broader base uh, for growth. The third uh, idea is, and of course that's a more uh, is a concern, particularly for South Asia, but is also a global concern, uh, and that is that the life support systems of our planet are under threat. And uh, South Asia, perhaps more than any other region, is vulnerable uh, to destabilization, to the destabilization of its physical environment as a result of global warming. And uh, our own view is that we, this is a threat to our existence, basically, uh, in the region. Uh, it's a threat to the stability of societies, political systems, economies. And uh, when faced with a common threat, History tells us that you have a better chance of survival if you cooperate rather than come into conflict. So we have to together manage and mitigate the adverse impact of uh, climate change in South Asia. That's the third sort of message. Uh, and the fourth aspect which uh, Professor Dubey has uh, so eloquently brought out is that these issues of cooperation, of making democracy, taking democracy to the people uh, building communities involves certain emotions, involves a particular kind of psyche, a particular kind of culture, a culture of a sense of responsibility towards others, culture of love, a culture of working together in cooperation. These are vital values uh, that could fuel uh, the, the processes that we've just talked about, democracy, environment, uh, and, and development. And these uh, cultural sort of institutions already exist in South Asia and have done for thousands of years. So in a sense, and what we've tried to do is to bring together this shared wisdom and identify the wellsprings of uh, civilization that exist and that we share in the region. Uh, and our view is in this book that we can, uh, as South Asia emerges uh, as, a, as a global uh, presence in, in, in the world economy, um, South Asia can not only contribute to fueling the global growth, uh, but it can also contribute to the civilization, the sort of uh, post-capitalist civilization, if you like, uh, and uh, on the basis of sort of re recognizing uh, this, the shared wellsprings of our, of our, of our cultures. Uh, this we call unity in diversity. The idea here is that this unity is in fact enriched by the diversity. The interaction across different cultures uh, enriches our sensibilities. And the common denominators of love, of tolerance, of cooperation uh, already exist deep in our psyches. And I think in a sense the cooperation that has taken place, and I found a brother in Professor Mushkun Dube and in all the others. This is a kind of brotherhood uh, across borders uh, that we've discovered, and uh, simultaneously we've discovered ourselves in a new way. Thank you. Ah, uh, oh, we request uh, this, these two copies to be given, one to Professor uh, Rahman Shoban and one to uh, Ambassador Sham Saran for the formal I think, which uh, one are you? Book you give one, yes. I'll give the other. Yes. One more announcement regarding this book. The book is available for sale 
just outside this hall in the OUP stall. So if you want to have a look, you can have a look after the session, of course. Yes. Coming to the second book, it is Towards a Stronger, Dynamic and Inclusive South Asia. This is the proceedings of 6th South Asia Economic Summit, edited by Saman Kelekama and Anushka Vijay Sinha. So we request Anushka Vijay Sinha to come on stage and give the two copies or the three copies of the book to the to three eminent dignitaries on stage or we have yes three here and after that if you can kindly speak something on the book Anushka oh sorry Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It gives both Dr. Kalegama and I a great pleasure in launching this book amidst uh, a very distinguished gathering. It is now widely acknowledged that a cornerstone of South Asia's future must be its ability to cooperate among each other in tackling the key socio-economic challenges of our time. And while recognizing the importance of regional cooperation, the 6th South Asia Economic Summit took uh, an additional look because it, is, it was motivated by the idea that for South Asia to emerge as a strong regional player and latch on to the shift in economic might from west to east, countries in the region, indeed the region as a whole, must see rapid, inclusive and sustainable growth. This growth in South Asia depends not only on collective regional action but equally on efforts made by South Asian countries to address the constraints to growth and unleash growth opportunities at a country level. This essentially cap captures the theme of the sixth SAES last year and the title of the volume we are launching today, Towards a Stronger, Dynamic and Inclusive South Asia. This book examines four key issues concerning growth in South Asian states, namely making maximum use of the region's human capital resources by creating productive employment for a growing labor force, adapting to the vagaries of climate change and its socio-economic consequences, addressing intra-country growth disparities, and ensuring the continued competitiveness of private enterprise in both domestic and external markets. The governments of individual South Asian economies face a number of daunting challenges in addressing these four issues. Equally, however, they possess a number of opportunities and a variety of policy options for tackling them. And I think that is uh, sort of what is captured in many of these chapters, not only putting forward some of the challenges across these four areas, but also putting forward some policy options. This volume provides an important starting point for considering the most effective ways in which individual and collective state action 
may be channeled towards achieving the goal of a future South Asian growth miracle. So the four, uh, the, the organizers, IPS last year, invited anchor research papers on each of the four main themes from four of the region's leading think tanks, many of whom, or all of whom are represented here today. We then uh, edited them, updated them, the authors updated them based on the discussions last year, pu pulling in some of the uh, content and comments from the audience and the panel discussions. The chapters include, and there are four because the summit last year was centered around what we called the big four themes, conceptualized to be the big four challenges uh, facing South Asia. So the first, demographic change, brain drain and human capital, development potentials in services, authored by Biswajit Da and Sayan Samanta of the RIS. The second is Managing Climate Change, Water Resources and Food Security in South Asia by Smriti Dahal and po Posh Raj Pandey from, uh, from SOTI. Managing Intra-Country Growth Disparities in South Asia is the third chapter by Abid Suleri, Vaka Ahmed, Mohammed Zeshan and Samia Batul from the SDPI. And the fourth one, development of the private sector in South Asia, addressing the challenges for building competitiveness by Golam Mozem and Mustafizur Rahman from CPD in uh, Bangladesh. We thank all the authors for their very valuable efforts in putting the chapters together and promptly sending it across to us. So once again, thank you very much to the authors and everyone who supported, especially uh, our donors, the uh, IDRC Think Tank Initiative supported the production of the papers and also this final volume. And thank you very much to all of you and we look forward to your comments once you read this. If uh, this does not include the discussions during the parallel sessions, it's only the four main themes. Uh, if you're interested in some of the key highlights of the parallel sessions, some of the key statements made by many of the dignitaries who are here, uh, who, what they said last year, there is a, a small recap bulletin in your dockets uh, a visual presentation of that. So thank you very much and thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Coming to the third book, it is on regional integration in South Asia, trains, challenges and prospects, edited by Muhammad A. Razaki and Urendra Besnet. So I request Mohammed A. Razaki to come on stage for the formal book release and then say a few words on the book. Thank you, um, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, uh, let me sincerely thank RIS for extending this invite to me and to the Commonwealth Secretariat uh, to be here and launch this volume uh, at this you know, seventh South Asian Economic Summit. Uh, when considering the theme of the, this particular summit, which is towards a South Asian Economic Union, I do think perhaps this was the most appropriate event for launching this volume. And I'm truly glad that you know, this launch uh, is taking place here. And I say this particularly because the volume provides a comprehensive assessment of the South Asian integration and deals with the issues that are known to be in the area of traditional trade issues, but at the same time, there are many, many new areas and, and activities and the areas of cooperation that have also been addressed in this particular volume. 
I would say that this is an excellent example of collaborative relationship between the Communal Secretariat and number of you know, researchers uh, from prestigious institutions, not only in South Asia, but also elsewhere. Uh, now, South Asia is one of the most dynamic regions in the Commonwealth in terms of growth that is taking place, uh, the economic growth, but also in terms of the trade growth that is taking place, uh, South Asia is the, is, the, is the dynamic reason here. Now, from the Commonwealth Secretariat, you know, our objective has been to support our member states. And in the case of South Asia, we've got five member states, Bangladesh, uh, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and Maldives, to support in their regional integration efforts so that the growth can be promoted through expanded inter-regional trade. And in the process, we think that, you know, that growth can be made pro-poor in nature. Now, what is the Comsec perspectives, uh, I mean, the Commonwealth Secretary's perspectives on the South Asian uh, inter-regional trade and, and, and growth? I think one of the figures that was quoted was that intra-South Asia trade is currently about $22 billion. We believe that this is something which is not achieving the true potential. In fact, if we consider the South Asian trade, I mean the inter-regional exports, is going to expand at a rate of 10% only over the next few years, which is a very reasonable assumption and by no way a kind of an optimistic assumption, then by 2020, which is just about you know, five years from now on, we can increase this intra-regional exports from $22 billion to $30 billion, and by the end of 2030, it should be $40 billion. However, if South Asia can manage to maintain the past performance, like you know, the, that has been achieved over the past decade or so, which is about 16%, then by 2030, the intra-regional exports should be $300 billion. And we do believe from the Commonwealth Secretary that this is very much achievable, and the growth that is taking place, this trade is bound to happen. So it is all the efforts that is needed to consolidate uh, the, some of the issues uh, like non-tariff barriers and, re, uh, and, uh, and trade facilitation measures, you know, uh, which can be a, a, a key thing uh, to, to achieve this. Now, in this volume, the issues that we have discussed includes the growth dynamics in South Asia and its implications for inter-regional trade. Then we also have an assessment on the SAFTA and the SAFTA assessment has been undertaken both with the assumptions of simple tariff cuts only but also considering uh, what we can achieve through improved trade facilitation measures. Uh, there is this discussion and dedicated chapter on promoting regional supply chains, several chapters on addressing the non-tariff barriers, uh, then on uh, regional trade and food security issue, it has also come up, regional energy cooperation, uh, then there are country perspectives on the regional integration efforts, but also bilateral cooperation and their implications for inter-regional trade. And uh, one of the particular bilateral trade relations you know, that has been uh, analyzed as part of the volume is the India-Pakistan uh, bilateral uh, relations and implications for South Asian economic uh, cooperation. Now, having said this, many of these chapters in this volume were presented in various South Asian events. And particularly, I'd like to mention uh, about one event that we organized in Delhi last year, and it was in collaboration with RIS. And through those events, some of these findings were discussed with the policymakers and eventually got refined and have been included in this particular volume. I would uh, sincerely hope that you will find this volume useful as these discussions on towards economic union is currently underway. And as the Honorable Vice President rightly pointed out, the roadmap on the South Asian uh, economic union needs to be well thought out. And in that process, I think uh, this volume that, and the analysis would provide useful insights and some information. Let me thank all the authors. I would not name them because you know, there are uh, quite a few. Uh, but they, they are pretty well known in the region and they represent many of the think tanks you know, that are here in, in the summit. And it is truly a great opportunity. It has been a great opportunity. And it is indeed to work with all of you and, and, and making this uh, volume possible. 
from the Commonwealth Secretariat, I bring you the warm greetings from our Secretary General, Mr. Kamalesh Sharma, and he also wishes this conference a great success. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. With a note of thanks, uh, we conclude this book release session. Two announcements. One, that all the books are available outside this hall, so you can have a look. And we will take half an hour tea break right now. And we request you to be by your seat by 4.45 so that we can start the plenary session sharp at 5. Thank you.